Chapter One, Part Two of English Men of Science by Francis Galton. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Leon Harvey. Chapter One, Part Two. Pedigrees. Thirteen families have been selected. Out of those to which about 120 of the scientific men on my list belong, as appearing noteworthy for their richness in ability during two, three, or more generations, or for any other peculiarity, in some cases they are also remarkable for purity of type. In some cases they are also remarkable for purity of type. The facts may, for the most part, be verified by reference to the publications of which the titles are given and the whole could have been obtained by any one who cared to search other more or less public sources of information five of these families bentham darwin dawson turner roscoe and taylor of ungar have already been alluded to in my previous work hereditary genius whence i have extracted what appeared to the point adding what was necessary in estimating the number of individuals in each generation the practice has been usually adopted of not counting those who died young or have not yet attained their thirtieth year alderson many members of this family have been intellectually gifted there have been an unusual number of cases of mathematical achievement among them first generation five males and two females children of rev j alderson and his wife the latter lived to ninety four of these three males deserve notice one james alderson m d of norwich two robert alderson recorder of norwich ipswich and yarmouth three john alderson founder and president of all the literary and scientific institutions of the time in kingston upon hull all these were men of considerable local repute second generation fifteen males and twelve females of whom five males and one female deserve especial mention one sir edward hall alderson baron of the excelsior and who the first man of his year at cambridge both in mathematics and classics being senior wrangler and senior classical medalist a distinction barely equalled in the long annals of university achievement two robert woodhouse also a senior wrangler lucasian and plumian professor of astronomy at cambridge three the rev samuel h alderson third wrangler and tutor of chaos college four sir james alderson m d f r s sixth wrangler for four years president of the royal college of physicians five colonel ralph alderson r e a distinguished officer and one of the first government commissioners of railways one mrs amelia opie the novelist third generation I have not sufficient information, although I know that it includes many persons of ability, among whom is Major H. Alderson, R.A., a distinguished officer, also a married lady of high artistic powers. Bentham A family consisting of only three male representatives, all eminent and one illustrious. First generation, two brothers, one, Jeremy Bentham, jurist of the highest rank, life by Sir J. Bowring prefixed to the collected works edited by him two general sir samuel bentham whose early manhood was spent in the russian service distinguished for his numerous administrative reforms and singular inventive power afterwards inspector general of naval works in england life by his widow eighteen sixty two second generation one male only george bentham f r s systematic botanist of the highest rank in early life writer on logic for many years president of the linnaean society carpenter among the characteristics of this family are literary and scientific enterprise philanthropic effort nonconformity and aptitude for oral exposition first generation reverend lant carpenter l l d unitarian minister descended from a non-subscribing presbyterian family and married to a wife of similar descent a leading member of the liberal party in exeter and bristol extremely active in the promotion of philanthropic objects both literary and scientific in his studies and a man of local celebrity memoirs by his son eighteen forty two second generation two males and three females of whom both the males and one female require notice one william b carpenter f r s registrar of the london university 
physiologist, and frequent writer and speaker on scientific subjects, in many cases connected with social amelioration. 2. Dr. B. P. Carpenter of Montreal, conchologist, actively engaged in philanthropic work. 1. Mary Carpenter, actively engaged in the foundation and organization of philanthropic institutions, especially juvenile reformatories and promoter of female education in India. Third generation, too young for special notice, includes an influential dissenting minister and a very successful student. Darwin. There are many instances in this family of a love for natural history and theory, and of an aptitude for collecting facts in business-like but peculiar ways. Speaking from private sources of knowledge, I am sure that these characteristics are hereditary rather than traditional. There is also a strong element of individuality in the race which is adverse to traditional influence. First Generation 1. Erasmus Darwin, M.D., F.R.S., Physician, Physiologist and Poet. His botanic garden had an immense reputation at the time it was written, for besides its intrinsic merits, it chimed in with the sentiments and mode of expression of his day. The ingenuity of Dr. Darwin's numerous writings and theories is truly remarkable. He was held in very high esteem by his scientific friends, including such celebrities as Priestley and James Watt, and it is by a man's position among his contemporaries and competitors that his worth may most justly be appraised. Unfortunately for his memory, he has had no good biographer. He was a man of great vigour, humour and geniality. Miss Seward's life of him, and latterly a pamphlet by Dr. Richardson, see also Mettiard's Life of Witchwood. 2. His brother, Robert Waring Darwin, wrote Principa Botanica, which reached its third edition in 1810. It is said in Mettiard's Life of Witchwood that the Darwins sprang from a lettered and intellectual race, as his, Dr. Darwin's, father was one among the earliest members of the Spalding Club. Second Generation seven males three females of whom three males deserve notice one charles darwin who died at the age of only twenty one poisoned by a dissection wound but who had already achieved such distinction that his name has been frequently mentioned in biographical dictionaries his thesis on obtaining the gold medal of the edinburgh university was on the distinction between pus and mucus it was a real step forward in those early days of exact medical science and was thought highly of at the time. 2. Robert Waring Darwin, M.D. F.R.S., a physician and shrewd observer of great provincial celebrity, on many grounds who lived at Shrewsbury. He married a daughter of Wedgwood's and was father of Charles Darwin, see below. 3. Sir Francis Darwin, originally a physician, but for many years living in a then secluded part of Derbyshire, surrounded by animal oddities. Half wild pigs ran about the woods, Tamed snakes frequented the house and the like. Third generation. Eight males, fourteen females, of whom three males may be mentioned, but illustriously among them, one. Charles Darwin, F.R.S., the Aristotle of our days, whom all scientific men reverence and love. The simple grandeur of those conclusions is as remarkable as the magnitude and multifariousness of their foundation. There is much ability in many individuals in this generation who bear the name of Darwin, and it has been strongly directed to natural history in the case of, too, a son of Sir Francis Darwin, a frequent writer, under a well-known nom de plume on sporting matters. Among those who do not bear that name, being children of the daughters of Sir Erasmus Darwin, I mention three, myself, with all humility, as falling technically within the limits of the group of scientific men under discussion, on the ground of former geographical work and having had much to do in the administration of various scientific societies. Fourth generation includes very few individuals who have reached mature manhood. Among these are one George Darwin, second wrangler at Cambridge, author of an important article on restrictions to liberty of marriage. Two, Captain Leonard Darwin R.A., who was second in the competition of his year for Woolwich and now engaged on the transit of Venus expedition. 3. Henry Parker, fellow of University College, Oxford, classical scholar and chemist. Dawson Turner. This family is characterized by great intellectual activity and much artistic taste. First generation. Dawson Turner, F.R.S., botanist, scholar, and a man of unwearied activity in collecting and compiling, and an encourager of work and others. 
One of his two uncles was a Reverend Joseph Turner, senior wrangler in 1768, and much distinguished by the personal friendship of Mr. Pitt. Among his ten male first cousins on the paternal side were the late Lord Justice Turner and his accomplished brothers. Second generation, two males and six females. The latter were all remarkable for their energy, accomplishments, and the large share they took in the literary labour of their father and husbands, which was not confined to transcribing. Three were accomplished artists, one a musician, another well-versed in Greek. Third generation. Of those above the age of thirty, there are five males, three females, of whom four males deserve mention. One, Dr. Joseph Hooker, President of the Royal Society, very eminent botanist, director of Kew Gardens, and formerly Tibetan traveller and naturalist to an Antarctic expedition. His father was Sir William Hooker, F.R.S., also one of the first botanists of his day, and director of Kew Gardens. 2. Francis Palgrave, editor of The Golden Treasury, scholar and art critic. 3. Gifford Palgrave, orientalist, Arabian explorer, and author of one of the most remarkable works of travel ever written. 4. R. H. Inglis Palgrave, statistician. The father of the three last was Sir Francis Palgrave, historian. Harcourt, scholastic success, with much love for science. First generation. The Reverend Vernon Harcourt, Archbishop of York, a man of polished intellect and social gifts. Second generation. Ten males and three females, of whom four males deserve notice. 1. The Reverend W. Vernon Harcourt, FRS, chemist, the first president and one of the founders of the British Association at a time when science was partially ridiculed and partially denounced. He was the chief framer of its elaborate constitution, which is, I believe, a solitary instance of the invention of a complex administrative machinery which worked perfectly from the first and has continued working almost unchanged for nearly half a century. It has served as a model upon which many other societies have organised themselves. 2. Egerton and 3. Edward Vernon Harcourt, both double firsts at Oxford, and four, Granville Vernon Harcourt, who died when an undergraduate at Oxford, having gained the Latin University Prize. Third generation, ten males and thirteen females, of whom two males deserve mention. One, Sir William Vernon Harcourt, MP, lately Solicitor General, Professor of International Law at Cambridge, well known as a political writer under the name Historicus. 2. Augustus G. Vernon Harcourt, F.R.S., a distinguished chemist, Lee's Reader in Chemistry at Oxford. Hill. The characteristics of this family are active interest in social improvement, power of organisation, mechanical aptitude, and general sterling worth. Its type in the second generation seems to have been unusually pure. First generation, Thomas Wright Hill. Descendant from stanch independence, and married to a wife of equal vigour and fortitude, who came from a family noted for mechanical aptitude, which she transmitted to her descendants. He rose by his own exertions, and, estimating forty, established a school, much spoken of at the time, on an entirely new principle of management at Hazelwood, near Birmingham. The boys were taken into administrative cooperation, they regulated their own discipline, and the things they learnt were of the most varied kind. Some men of high note were educated there, and among these at least one of the scientific men on my list. He gave much attention to mental calculation, and even on his deathbed, estimating 88, invented and successfully applied a new method for determining, for any year, the date of Easter. Also known for his analysis of articulate sounds and phonography. Short biographical notice in annual report, R. Astronomical Society, February 13, 1852. Second generation consisted of five males and two females. All five males had strong points of resemblance and deserve notice. 1. Sir Rowland Hill, KCB and FRS originator and organiser of the system of penny postage, which is an influence of the first order of magnitude in modern civilization. He was noted in youth for powers of mental calculation, and in some points was superior even to Zara Colburn and George Bitter. Thus, he could mentally extract to the nearest integer the cube root of any number not exceeding two thousand millions. First inventor, 1835, of rotary printing, the method which, with slight changes of detail, is still in use for newspapers. Rewarded by three separate grants, viz. in 1846 by a public testimonial 
of the value of thirteen thousand three hundred sixty pounds in eighteen sixty four by the award from the treasury of his full salary of two thousand pounds a year on his retirement and in the same year by a parliamentary grant of twenty thousand pounds two matthew davenport hill q c late recorder of birmingham law reformer of note especially in reference to dealings with the criminal class substituting promptitude certainty and strictness for delay uncertainty and severity c law magazine july eighteen seventy two three edwin hill superintendent of the stamp department first inventor of the envelope folding machine since improved by mr d la rue he completely remodelled the stamping machinery at somerset house was most highly commended for these improvements in each of the first three reports of the commissioners of inland revenue and again by a minute on his retirement referring to his eminent and exceptional service he like his brother was a standard writer on dealings with criminals also on currency four arthur headmaster of bruce castle school where he fully developed the principles first laid down by his father five frederick hill formerly inspector of prisons then assistant secretary of the post office a great and thorough reformer of the prisons under his observation aiming to fit prisoners for honest life on their release concurrently he contributed numerous memoirs on social improvements generally third generation fourteen males and seventeen females among many of whom the family characteristics continue well marked thus one dr berkeley hill and two miss emily clark of adelaide australia are both actively engaged in work connected with pauper children la trobe a family characterized by its religious bent and musical and literary tastes joined to a love of enterprise first generation benjamin la trobe a convert to the Moravians, of which esteemable sect he was a patriarch and a mainstay. Aiken's History of Manchester. Second generation. Three males, zero females. Two at least of whom deserves notice. 1. Christian Ignatius Latrobe, author of the well-known collection of sacred music. 2. Benjamin Latrobe, architect and engineer in America third generation seven males two females of whom two deserve especial notice one charles joseph latrobe governor of victoria at the time of the gold discoveries author of a once extremely popular book on switzerland called the alpenstock which was the precursor of murray's handbooks and more generally diffused knowledge many others of this generation who bear the latrobe name are gifted with the family characteristics two john frederick beckman f r s distinguished engineer fourth generation still young includes colonel osman latrobe who was chief of general lee's staff in america at an early age playfair among the characteristics of this family is an interest in various branches of science joined to a capacity for official work and public action first generation rev dr playfair principal of the university of st andrews author of a work on geography second generation four males and three females of whom three males deserve notice one george playfair m d chief inspector general of hospitals in bengal he was ahead of his profession in india and author of various medical memoirs two colonel sir hugh lyon playfair who on his retirement from service pursued life of incessant activity in public improvement numerous biographical notices were written of him soon after his death three colonel william playfair whose memory still lives in india as one of the most accomplished amateur actors there were two cousins in this generation the one a very distinguished man professor playfair the celebrated mathematician and author of the huttonian theory the other was mr playfair an architect of much eminence to whom many of the principal public buildings in edinburgh are due third generation twenty-one males and twenty females of whom two males deserve a special notice one the right honorary lyon playfair m p f r s formerly professor of chemistry long engaged in scientific administration of various kinds and postmaster general at the close of the late administration two colonel r l playfair r a the well-known consul general of algiers and naturalist a third brother is a professor at king's college roscoe the type of this family is strongly marked 
it has been characterized by much cultivation, refinement, and poetical taste. First generation, William Roscoe, author of Lorenzo de Medici, Leo X, etc. The above-mentioned characteristics were strongly marked in him. Life by his son, memoirs by Hartley Coleridge in Northern Worthies, and sketches by Washington Irving. Second generation, seven males and three females, of whom four males and two females deserve notice. 1. Thomas Roscoe, editor of Lanzi's History of Painting, and author of many other works. 2. Henry Roscoe, author of a standard book on the law of evidence of British lawyers and of the life of his father. 3 and 4. Both decidedly gifted and authors of poems of merit. 1. Jane Elizabeth Roscoe, a woman of superior mind, intensely interested in public affairs, writer of some poems. 2. Mary Anne Roscoe, authoress of poems of merit. Third generation, 17 males, 16 females, of whom 3 males and 1 female deserve notice. 1. William Cadwell Roscoe, poet and critic, memoirs and collected works by R. H. Hutton. 2. Henry Unfield Roscoe, F.R.S., Professor, Eminent Chemist. 3. William Stanley Jevons, F.R.S., Professor, Author of The Coal Question, and of various works on logic and political economy. 1. Margaret Roscoe, afterwards Mrs. Sandback, Novelist. Stretchy, an old family, small in numbers, but of a marked and persistent type. Among its characteristics are an active interest in public matters and an administrative aptitude. There have been men of eminence in generations previous to those mentioned below. First generation, Sir Henry Strachey, Under Secretary of State and otherwise employed in high official posts in India, America and England. Real negotiator of peace at Versailles. Stanhope's History of England. Received Medal of Society of Arts for having introduced indigo into Florida. Second generation, three males, one female, of whom two males deserve notice. One. Sir Henry Strachey, Indian judge, called by James Mill in his History of India, the wisest of the company's servants. Aided much in the organization of the Indian judicial administration. 2. Edward Strachey, author of reports of acknowledged weight on Indian judicial subjects. Fifth report. Third generation, six males and one female, of whom three males deserve notice. 1. Sir John Strachey, eminent in all branches of civil administration in India. 2. Henry Strachey, Tibetan explorer, gold medalist of the Royal Geographical Society. 3. Major General Richard Strachey, RE, FRS, active administrator of Indian engineering work, physical geographer. Taylor's of Ongar. Numerous members of this family have shown a curious combination of restless literary talent, artistic taste, evangelical disposition and mechanical aptitudes. There is an interesting work published upon it called Family Pen by the Reverend Isaac Taylor, 1867, see below in the fourth generation, which contains a list of 90 publications by 10 different members of the family up to that time, and there have been more publications and at least one new writer since. First generation, Isaac Taylor came to London with an artist's ambition, ended up being a reputable engraver. He acted for many years as secretary to the Incorporated Society of Artists of Great Britain, which was the forerunner of the Royal Academy. All the family characteristics were strongly marked in him. Second generation consisted of three males, all of whom deserve notice. 1. Charles Taylor, a learned recluse, editor of Calmet's Bible. 2. Reverend Isaac Taylor, author of Scenes in Europe, etc., educated as an engraver and far surpassing his father in ability. He married Anne Martin, a woman of reputed genius, authoress of the family mansion, and the numerous able members of the Taylor family for the two next generations sprung, with one exception from this fortunate union. 3. Josiah Taylor, eminent publisher of architectural works. He made a large fortune. 3rd Generation Descendants of Isaac Taylor and Anne Martin, three males and three females, of whom two males and two females deserve notice. 1. Isaac Taylor author of Natural History of Enthusiasm. 2. Jeffreys Taylor, author of Ralph Richards, Young Islanders, etc. 1 and 2. Anne and Jan Taylor, joint authors of Original Poems. Anne married the Reverend Joseph Gilbert. 
In this same generation is ranked the Reverend Howard Hinton, a leading Baptist minister, who was a son of one of the sisters in the previous generation, and is father of a well-known aurist. Fourth generation. Six males and nine females now living, and some few others who are deceased. Of these, five males and one female deserve special notice. One, Reverend Isaac Taylor, author of Words and Places of the Family Pen and of Etruscan Researches. Two, Josiah Gilbert, author of The Dolomite Mountains. Three, Joseph Gilbert, FRS, eminent for his chemical and physiological researches in their relation to agriculture. The paternal race of Gilbert had also a marked type. 4. Thomas Martin Herbert, independent minister, scholar and writer. 5. Edward Gilbert Herbert, of the Chancery Bar, who died young of diphtheria. 1. Helen Taylor, authoress of Sabbath Bells. Wedgwood. This family is curious for the sporadic character of its ability, as shown by the number of its members in rather distant relationships who have become distinguished. The Wedgwoods must originally have been a pure type, because the name was prevalent in the village where the great potter was born, and the bearers of it were largely interrelated, and followed the same craft. He himself married a Wedgwood, who was a third cousin, and both his father and grandfather were potters. Meteard's Life First Generation Josiah Wedgwood, FRS, father of British pottery, whose once abundant works now fetch fabulous prices. Second generation, three sons and four daughters. One son deserves notice, viz. Thomas Wedgwood, who died young. His abilities were great. He was an ardent experimentalist, and has some claim to rank as the first person who ever made a photograph. See page 7. Third generation, including descendants from the sisters of Josiah Wedgwood, contains 1. Hensley Wedgwood, English Dictionary and Origin of Language. 2. Charles Darwin, FRS, C under Darwin. 3. Sir Henry Holland, Bart, M.D. F.R.S., who died subsequently to my having begun this inquiry. 4. S.H. Parks, M.D. F.R.S., Professor of Hygiene to the Army Medical School. 4th Generation, C. Under Darwin. Statistical Results Let us now look at the near relations of the scientific men from a purely statistical point of view, combining those already quoted with the rest and calculate the proportion of them who have achieved distinction. It appears from my returns, which are rather troublesome to deal with owing to incompleteness of information, that 120 scientific men have certainly not more than 250 brothers, 460 uncles, and 1,200 male cousins who reach adult life. They have somewhat less than 120 fathers and 240 grandfathers, because the list contains brothers and cousins. I will take two groups. One, grandfathers and uncles, both paternal and maternal, say about 660 persons. Two, brothers and male cousins on both sides, 1,450 persons. On the supposition, which is somewhat in excess of the fact that I am dealing with complete information concerning the families of 120 scientific men, I find in the first group of 660 persons, one, Jeremy Bentham, a great leader of thought and founder of a school of philosophy. Two, Wedgwood, the father of a national industry in art. 3. Compton, the inventor of a machine for cotton manufacture, which gave a timely impetus to the great national industry. 4. Maskelyne, an astronomer royal. 5. Playfair, the scientific head of a Scotch university. 6. William Smith, founder of British geology. 7. Harcourt, the lawgiver and first president of the British Association. 8. Pemberton Milnes, who refused both the Secretaryship of State and a peerage. 9. Latrobe, who was to the very worthy sect of the Moravians much what Barclay was to the Quakers, that is to say, not its founder, but a great supporter to it. 10 and 11. Two archbishops, Harcourt of York and Broderick of Gashel. 12. Erasmus Darwin, poet and philosopher of high repute in his day. 13. Isaac Taylor, author of Natural History of Enthusiasm, etc. I will stop here, though it would be easy to extend the list considerably if I took a slightly lower level of celebrity for my limit. Every one of these thirteen men, when he died, was or would have been, if he had not been previously outlived his reputation, the subject of numerous obituary notices, and his death an event of sufficient public interest to warrant his being reckoned as an eminent man. I formally calculated 
and have since seen no reason to doubt my conclusion that the annual obituary of the united kingdom does not include more than fifty men who are eminent in that sense therefore this small band of six hundred and sixty individuals contains almost one-fourth as much eminence as is annually produced by the united kingdom a different criterion of eminence may be found in the number of celebrated men reared in the universities whither a large proportion of the brightest youths of the nation find their way i examined the lists of honours at cambridge in the ten years eighteen twenty no nine inclusive and also the four years eighteen forty two five of which i happen to have some personal knowledge whence it appeared to me that on the average six hundred and sixty cambridge students do not produce more than three men whose general eminence is of equal rank to that of the thirteen men in the six hundred and sixty grandfathers and uncles under consideration a more exact test and the best of which i can think is to examine into the fate of the boys at large schools it is not difficult to learn the productiveness of each school as regards eminence because there are annual gatherings to which former schoolboys who have won distinction are generally invited and not unfrequently come as men begin to distinguish themselves at thirty-five and may be supposed willing to attend on such occasions till seventy the notabilities invited to be present at school gatherings present the product of say thirty-five years i feel sure that six hundred and sixty middle-class boys do not turn out more than a fraction of one eminent man though they may turn out many who do well in life and earn fortunes and local repute the second of the group consists as already mentioned of brothers and male cousins making a total of about one thousand four hundred and fifty men i will examine the achievements of these solely in respect to high university success partially because several of the cousins are too young to have had time fully to distinguish themselves otherwise let us limit ourselves to the following names the list would be lengthened if we took a lower level cambridge one alderson both first classic and senior wrangler that is first mathematician of his year at cambridge two woodhouse senior wrangler three main senior wrangler four humphrey senior classic five scott joint senior classic oxford here the method of examination affords no means of ascertaining who is absolutely the first of his year since the men are grouped alphabetically in classes and not according to their order of merit in those classes the names i will select are those of men who were in the first class and have subsequently distinguished themselves viz six Moberly, headmaster of winchester now bishop of salisbury seven francis palgrave critic eight honorary george Bronwick, first class both in classics and history well known as an influential though anonymous writer it is a remarkable fact or coincidence that five men out of a group of one thousand four hundred and fifty or say one out of every three hundred should be first in his year in the single university of cambridge either in mathematics or in classics this is about the proportion that exists among the men who actually go to cambridge and these as before mentioned are no chance selections but include a large part of the annual pick of the intellectual flower of the whole nation moreover these distinguished brothers and cousins of scientific men are themselves interrelated the two senior wranglers alderson and woodhouse being first cousins and the two classics scott and broderick being first cousins also both families being in other respects rich in ability we may otherwise appreciate the influence of heredity as distinguished from that of tradition and education by observing the similarity of disposition that sometimes prevails among numerous scattered branches of the same family the two following extracts from the replies i have received are illustrations of what i mean one my numerous relatives though unknown to fame are mostly characterized by a great breadth of thought and rare independence of action these characteristics seem clearly traced by the writer to a great-grandparent who immigrated from germany two counting third cousins i have scores and scores of relatives and scarcely an unsteady person among them i have numerous returns in which the writer analyzes his own nature and confidently ascribes different parts of it to different ancestors one correspondent has ingeniously written out his natural characteristics in red blue and black inks according to their origin a method by which its anatomy is displayed at a glance my data afford an approximate estimate of the ratio according to which effective ability hereditary gifts plus education plus opportunity is distributed throughout the different degrees of kinship 
they state one the number of kinsmen in the several near degrees two the number of those among them who were in any sense public men and three the number of those who not being publicly known had nevertheless considerable reputation among their friends it is therefore only requisite after some previous revision to add the returns together and to compare the number of distinguished kinsmen in their various degrees with the total number of kinsmen in those degrees to obtain results whose ratio to one another is the one we are in search of these conclusions are not materially vitiated by the fact that different correspondents may have different estimates of what constitutes distinction so long as each writer is consistent to his own scale i have tried to figure in many ways without any revision at all with moderate revision and with careful sifting and i find the proportions to come out much the same in every case in comparing these with previous results obtained from an analysis of men of much higher general eminence hereditary genius page three hundred seventeen i find the falling off in ability from the central figure the hero of the family to be less rapid as the distance of the kinship increases there is however one group in that book consisting of divines whose general eminence is not so great as the rest and which also resembles the scientific men in the family distribution of ability my former figures for one hundred divines gave twenty-two notable fathers forty-two brothers twenty-eight grandfathers and forty-two uncles my present results for one hundred scientific men are twenty-eight thirty-six twenty and forty respectively as regards the relative influence of the paternal and maternal lines i find close equality my method of comparison is by setting off paternal grandfathers and paternal uncles against maternal grandfathers and maternal uncles no other near degree of kinship being available for the purpose my results for one hundred scientific men are paternal grandfathers public characters ten of high private reputation three paternal uncles thirteen and eight making a total on the paternal side of thirty-four on the other hand the maternal grandfathers are eleven and four maternal uncles fifteen and seven make a total on the maternal side of thirty-seven i leave to other chapters some remarks about the relative value of maternal and paternal educational influences on scientific men End of chapter 1 of English Men of Science